Hi, welcome to ETV. I'm Ned Tasman. And I'm Sierra Smith, and this is your weekly news update. Edinburgh University noticed Constitution Day with a panel discussion on September 18th. The panel, Police Safety and Modern Domestic Warfare, discussed the effects of poli police militarism in Ferguson, Missouri. Dr. Omimi Simbabu and Dr. Matthews discussed the importance of Constitution Day and how it affects college students. Please do that. Let me know. Otherwise, uh, we will just use the, the photographs, the best photographs. Also, you should know that whatever photographs we use, you know, I don't we won't. But train them in terms of good judgment and effective judgment as to whether they even use it or did it. The police are beginning to view themselves not only in a militarized way, but in a severely authoritarian way. Where they well, for one thing, um, it is a learning experience that is outside of the classroom. It's important for people to understand that learning does not just take place in a formal setting. It takes place wherever we are. And so one of the things that we try to do uh, in the political science major is make sure that people have learning experiences that don't just dwell in the classroom. Uh, additionally, it's important because what you learn in the classroom should be practical. You should be able to take information that you get that is conceptual, that is theoretical, uh, critical, and analytical in nature, and you should be able to put it into practice in your everyday lives. So that's why. Panel and the diverse audience to talk about issues they normally don't talk about. And particularly have people who are uh, experts in the field, like a district attorney, uh, only this investigator, and ourselves, I think it's very self -reading. And I think students can get something out of this more than simply sitting in the classroom. But there are different opinions, uh, all the ways to some issues. I think that students learn a great deal from this. So it's always important to be inclusive and have these type of passages. The panel was moderated by Rhonda Matthews of this political science department. Constitution Day recognizes the signing of the United States Constitution on September 17, 1787. On Monday, September 22nd, the Cooper Science Center will host another planetarium show. Legends of the Night Sky will provide noticeable constellations from Greek mythology, such as Perseus, Andromeda, and many more. Attendees learn how to find these constellations in their backyard with the famous What's Up portion of the program. To learn more information on planetarium shows, go to events.edinburgh.edu. On September 18th, Edinburgh University faculty, alumni, and friends over the age of 21 gathered in Van Houten Hall for a night of trivia and social bonding. A dinner of national or international foods was served at a live auction and it took place at night. The competition included three rounds of trivia, including a bonus round. All benefits went to Edinburgh University Study Abroad Scholarship Program. The Edinburgh University community is excited to announce that the university has earned a spot as a recipient for the Higher Education Excellence and Diversity Award. This award reflects the community as being diverse, accepting of any race, gender, ethnicity, veterans, students with disabilities, as well as many others. The university will be featured in the November 2014 issue of Insight into Diversity. Do you have a Mac but you don't know how to use it? There will be a Macintosh introduction training session in Ross Hall on September 24th from 10 to 11.30 in the morning. This session will teach students who have recently purchased a Mac or are considering switching to one. Several topics will be discussed between how a Mac is different from Windows. For more information, you can search it on Edinburgh University's calendar page at edinburgh.edu. Last Monday night, the University Programming Board hosted their first open mic night to kick off the 2014 fall semester. Opening up was Island Band's first class. They played popular song covers such as Jason Derulo and Sam Smith, and also performed a few original songs. Their island vibes brought a warm atmosphere to the audience who sang along with our featured guests. After the performance, various Edinburgh students performed their favorite songs and showed off their musical talents for all to hear. 
Did you know that human trafficking was reported in all 50 states last year? Human trafficking is a modern day slavery, slavery problem where individuals are taken from their streets and are forced to work in toxic environments. According to the Federal Bureau of Investigation, human trafficking facilities, the illegal movements of immigrations across borders and provides a source of income for organized crime groups and sometimes terrorists. If you wish to learn more about human trafficking and its effects on society, then gather in the multi-purpose room in the Frank G. Polk Center on Tuesday, September 23rd for a seminar that, on a problem that is rocking the globe. The seminar features members from the Northwest Anti-Human Trafficking Coalition, the Border Patrol for Northwest Region, and the FBI. The event starts at 4 o'clock in the Student Center. Coming up, we have baby news, a Whitney Houston announcement, and a former Disney star comeback. Stay tuned. Yes, I am. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? No, no. They want to help, Ow. but don't know how. Oh, you Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. Hey, look at mommy. Maybe the light hurts his eyes. Maybe she's just not hungry. Look. Maybe it's her face. Avoiding eye contact is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. Welcome to Entertainment News. I'm Becca Rose. This week in Los Angeles, notoriously private couple Eva Mendez and Ryan Gosling welcomed into the world their first newborn, a beautiful baby girl. News of Mendez's pregnancy was surprisingly revealed back in July when she was already seven months pregnant. Meanwhile, record producer Clive Davis announced that he will release Whitney Houston's first ever live album. The album, titled Whitney Houston Live, Her Greatest Performances, will be available as both a 16-song CD as well as a 19-song DVD and is set to hit the shelves on November 10th. On Thursday, Kate Middleton canceled her trip to Malta due to nausea and sickness caused by her pregnancy. Prince William will take his wife's place, spending the trip on a Grand Harbor boat ride and visiting the British High Commissioner's Garden Party. The prince later gave a health update on Kate, explaining that she's feeling so-so after canceling the Malta trip upon a doctor's request. 26-year-old singer Hilary Duff is making her comeback with her new single, All About You. The former Lizzie McGuire star is set to release the music video for her new single on September 24th. Coming up, we have a look at Scotland's unity and a manhunt that is causing Americans to be alert in global news. Stay tuned. Maybe he's really focused. Maybe he likes spinning the wheels. Maybe he just loves trucks. Preoccupation with objects is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? They want to help, but don't know how. Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit StopBullying.gov. Welcome back to ATV. I'm Jake Phillips, and here's your Global Report. In Scotland, a vote was cast whether the United Kingdom should face division or sustain unity. The vote's results, announced Friday, prevented a break of 307-year union with England bringing relief to Britain's economic and political establishment, including Prime Minister David Cameron, who faced calls for his resignation if Scotland had broken away. Independence leader Alex Sullivan's plea for a new nation was undermined when Scotland chose to remain in the union with England, Wales, and Northern Ireland. With the decision to stay unified, David Cameron promised to give Scotland new powers on taxes, spending, and welfare. He told the reporters that the new plans will be agreed upon by November with draft legis legislation by January. The search continues for suspected state police killer Eric Frein. 
Frying is wanted for the death of Pennsylvania State Police Corporal Brian Dixon and the shooting of Trooper Alex Douglas outside the Blooming Grove Police Barracks almost a week and a half ago. Frying is believed to have strong feelings against law enforcement officials and he is a known survivalist. State police have narrowed the search 20 miles outside the Frying family home in Canadensis, Pennsylvania. Officials say that Frying is armed, but there is no confirmation if he is a threat to anyone other than law enforcement. Coming up, we have a look at the seven-day forecast with Dorian Chern. Stay tuned. Beautiful, Dorian. Great. Good. Homemade noodles. Oh. Marty, stop it. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. It reminds me. I've been thinking, uh, maybe we should try a new form of birth control. I heard about this one, it's called the IUD, intrauterine device. Or we could try the patch on your arm. Actually, I think that one goes on your butt. Bedsider.org has birth control information and a lot more. And it's... What do you think, though? Arm of the butt. up on sex don't give up on birth control either there are more methods than you think find yours at bedsider.org Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? No, no. They want to help, no. but don't know how. Oh, you got Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. And welcome back, everyone. Chief Weather Forecaster Dorian Chern. Let's take a look at the week's forecast. But we're going to start on the United States weather map. As you see, the high pressure located in Illinois, that's going to be our dominating force for our weather for this upcoming school week. And let's take a look at the seven-day forecast, shall we? We're going to start off on Monday. We do have a few rain showers lingering in the areas, but after we get past this, we're looking, we're shaping up to have a nice week. Highs 54 with a low of 40 degrees on Tuesday. Oh, I love seeing that sunny skies out here in the Edinburgh region. High 65 with a low of 46 degrees. On Wednesday, hump day, everyone. Look, look at the trend. Just sunny skies in the Edinburgh region, but the temperatures begin to warm back up. High 71 with a low of 51 degrees. And moving on to Thursday, you know, we might as well just keep this sunny train going. Highs in the area, 72 degrees with a low of 51 degrees. And the last day of the school week, hey, I'm like, for real, I'm happy right now with this sunny skies. Highs 73 with a low of 50 degrees. And let's take a look at today's trivial question. What do you call a full moon in autumn? Got stumped yet? Today's answer is the harvest moon. And it's good to see that we're having some warmer temperatures as we go into our first day of fall. Stay tuned after these commercial breaks with your Fighting Scott Sports. All right, you ready for some baseball trivia? Let's do it. What year produced the most no-hit games in the big leagues? Seven no-hitters in 1990. Wow, that's right. Now a question that's not trivial. How many children will witness bullying this year? Huh. Uh, the answer, three out of four. 75 percent? That's wow. right. How many of them will say something? Kids want to help, but don't know how. Teach them how to stop bullying and be more than a bystander at stopbullying.gov. up on sex don't give up on birth control either there are more methods than you think find yours at bedsider.org hello everyone and welcome to this week's fighting scott sports report i am tyler trumbauer the women's volleyball team is having a very successful start to their 2014 campaign and last week the home fans actually were able to see the squad in action as the team had their home opener last tuesday night
A great crowd of 177 came out to Macomb Fieldhouse to support the volleyball team as it hosted the Notre Dame College of Ohio, who would face just three days earlier in the PSAC MEC crossover in Erie and earn a three games to one victory. A win would make the Scots, who are under the direction of 10th year head coach Missy Soboliski, winners of five straight matches. Burrow took game one and got off to a great start in game two as well as Mara Maycock made it 12 to nine in favor of Edinburgh with the attack here. Sophomore Latoya Hutchinson contributed as well with this point here later in game two. The Scots would take game two, but momentum began to shift Notre Dame's way. The Falcons blew this attack by the fighting Scots, who seemed to ease a bit in game three. And they finished off this great back and forth. The best one of the match in the entire night. Just unbelievable skills it takes to keep that volley going that long. Notre Dame earned the point to completely swing momentum their way. Early in game three, which they won. Freshman Sidney Trathan on the attack here earned the match winning point with this attack as Edinburgh moved to seven and two with a three games to one victory. Trathan explained what the ladies do to keep their successful wins um, going. Well, we say uh, during our games that we have to be like a freight train and that we have to come out strong and keep that rather than go like on this roller coaster. So I think if we just start out strong every single game and keep that up, I think we'll do great this season. The ladies are at Mercyhurst Friday night, visit Gannon on Saturday, and return turn home next Tuesday night to host Slippery Rock University. The women's soccer team has been having quite the opposite start to their season as it is off to the worst beginning to a season in program history. The ladies tried to change that this past Saturday as they faced Shippensburg University at Sox Harrison Stadium. The Scots were coming in 0-4-1, while the Raiders of Shippensburg were 1-2-1. Edinburgh was also on an eight-game winless streak dating back to last season. All of that changed, however, last Saturday. Off a corner kick by Allison Brown, teammate and senior Liz Debo corralled the rebound off a blocked shot by Alice, uh, or excuse me, uh, Ashley DeVito in front of the goal and put it in the back of the net in the 10th minute of the game to take an early 1-0 lead. Shippensburg had their chances in the contest, however, like here, where Kat Harner's shot went off the corner post and Harner thought it went in, as did some of her teammates and her coaches but the refs disagreed as play continued on. Edinburgh goalkeeper Megan Kelly shut down Shippensburg the rest of the day as the senior earned her 18th career shutout in the net, making her the all-time shutout leaders in Borough women's soccer history. With the one to nothing win and her first goal of the season, Debo was relieved. It was, it was great. We were finally out of our slump and scoring that first goal meant a lot, especially since I'm a senior now. So it's definitely getting us on the roll, and that next goal means a lot, and means a lot for our team. And a win's a win no matter what. When nothing, it's okay. The ladies return to action on Saturday at University of Pittsburgh at Johnstown, followed by contests at Clarion and Indiana University of Pennsylvania. The football team had its home opener last Saturday as it welcomed East Stroudsburg University to Sox Harrison Stadium. The Scots were looking to notch their first victory of their 2014 campaign. Owen oh, to Edinburgh hosted a 1-1 East Stroudsburg University club that was looking to show what they were made of. 
ESU got on the board first with a quick touchdown for a 6 to nothing lead after its extra point attempt missed. The Warriors scored again as quarterback Matt Soltes found Dusty Reed on a 9-yard receiving touchdown to take a 13 to nothing lead. The Scots got on the board courtesy of a Cody Harris 4-yard pass to sophomore Darren Massey in the flat for a touchdown. You'll be hearing that a lot as he finished with three of those on the day. Soltes connected with Reed again for another East Stroudsburg touchdown here to make it 22-7. Warriors with 4.58 left in the first half before Harris answered for Edinburgh with this one-yard pass to tight end Nick Helmick on third and goal to make it 20-14 in favor of East Stroudsburg. Edinburgh took the lead by way of this six-yard Sports center esque scamper by quarterback Cody Harris as he leaps over an ASU defender en route to the end zone right before the half. We speed ahead to the fourth quarter with the Scotch trailing 34 27 until Harris finds Massey for the third receiving touchdown of the day for the sophomore to knot it up at 34 with 6.51 left in the final quarter. Edinburgh turned the ball over on downs on the next play inside ESU's 10 yard line, which set up ESU for this. 30-yard touchdown pass from Soltes to Dusty Reed to put the icing on the cake and give the Warriors the 47-34 victory. Despite the loss, head coach Scott Browning noticed solid play from a few individuals. Yeah, he, he did. You know, we had some other guys. We were an offensive line that I thought at times played pretty well, and the quarterback that played, and some other receivers, and we got, you know, and, you know, look at us on uh, offense. You know, you've got the tailback number two, Anthony Williams. And, He's a true freshman. Number seven's a true freshman. Massey's a sophomore. And, you know, we're young. And, uh, but we still had some guys make some plays. We just didn't make enough. The football team returns to the gridiron this Saturday as they visit California University of Pennsylvania. That contest is slated for a 1 p.m. kickoff. The women's tennis team took to the courts for their first match of the 2014-15 season as they welcomed Alderson Brodus University to Edinburgh. Teammates Aranzo Carrillo and Julia Helster in the one-two punch of the women's tennis team are now doubles partners as well and face Alderson Brodus's top team in a match. The Carrillo Helster duo made quick work of them here, winning 8-1 in this match to help the Scots cruise to a 7-2 victory as a squad. The only losses for Edinburgh came by, forfeit, by forfeits. After the match, Carrillo voiced the goals of the girls for the upcoming season. Uh, our main goal is to make it to the NCAA tournament, like for PSEX, make it to the conference tournament. That's the main goal. Katie Allen, Raquel Holiday, and Lydia Brown all registered wins for the Scots. They return to action on October 3rd at home against Westchester University. The men's and women's cross country team may be done competing at the, at the Doug Watts cross country course for the season, but the Harriers are far from finished. Last Saturday, both the men and women competed in the Iona Meet of Champions in the Bronx of part of New York. The women's team had a very successful meet with junior Casey Jones finishing second overall in the 6.1 kilometer course. The ladies finished behind Brown, Yale, and Princeton in the team aspect of the race. For the men, Logan Kempney paced all borough runners. Senior Matt Link finished 46th in the contest. The cross country team is back in action on October 4th at the Greater Louisville Classic in Louisville, Kentucky the same course that is holding nationals this year. That's all I have for sports. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at ETV Sports for all the latest borough athletic happenings. Hey, look at mommy. Maybe the light hurts his eyes. Maybe she's just not hungry. Look. Maybe it's her face. Avoiding eye contact is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. Well, Sierra, it's been a crazy show. Thank you for watching ETV. I'm Ned Tasman. Make sure you follow us at Borough Television. And make sure you email us at edinburghtv at gmail.com. Have a great night. Boom! Because you're so hungry. <laughs>
All right, you ready for some baseball trivia? Let's do it. What year produced the most no-hit games in the big leagues? Seven no-hitters in 1990. Wow, that's right. Now a question that's not trivial. How many children will witness bullying this year? Huh. The answer, three out of four. 75%? That's wow. right. How many of them will say something? Kids want to help, but don't know how. Teach them how to stop bullying and be more than a bystander at stopbullying.gov. Good. Homemade noodles. Oh. Marty, stop it. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. It reminds me. I've been thinking, uh, maybe we should try a new form of birth control. I heard about this one, it's called the IUD, intrauterine device. Or we could try the patch on your arm. Actually, I think that one goes on your butt. Bedsider.org has birth control information and a lot more. And it's... What do you think, though? Arm or the butt? 